Hello, welcome everybody. All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, cast a highly insulated combustion core uh, for an 8 inch rocket mass heater. Um, in this one, I'm going to be using store bought materials. This is going to be for a friend of mine, but I'd like to encourage you to explore uh, using found materials, um, definitely experimenting with some of this stuff outside and, and testing your your process before you build one for your inside stove. Um, so we're going to do the same as I've done before, run some pictures through. Um, here we are starting with some measurements. Now in this one I'm laying it out on Hardy Backer. Um, so the measurements for this one, I did this on purpose to show you the finished inside dimensions. If you're using wood, which you can do to make this core, you just want to um, size the measurements such that when the wood burns out, these measure measurements are what you're left with inside. Um, I expect this hardy board to break out eventually, but I did want to build it uh, with the dimensions of the finished inside um, so that you could see what that would be. So if you were using half inch wood, you would subtract an, an inch um, all the way around from these measurements so that when the wood burned away, the clay was left at these measurements. So here we've got fire clay, perlite, furnace cement. Now I wanted to show you that the furnace cement is um, sometimes called refractory mortar, sometimes it's called furnace cement and fireplace mortar. Uh, this, either of these will work, pretty much anything you can find along this lines will work. We're going to mix this with our clay. Now if you mix this with your found clay it'll work great, but in this case of course I'm using fire clay. Um, I use these abrasive jigsaw blades to cut the hardy backer. Um, they worked well. You make make sure you wear a respirator. This throws a lot of dust. Um, so I cut the mold pieces to shape, and then I just used a hot glue gun and started sticking those together. This doesn't need to be perfect. Now notice that that. Um, top is being carried by the sides. In other words, that top of the feed tube is wider than the sides. That's important because when we pack this in the mold, that's going to need to carry the weight of the clay. So um, again, you might need to reinforce the inside, put some pieces across if you're using wood that's gonna, or something that's going to get moist. Um, and then you want to build a box. This should be, in this case, 16 inches by 16 by 32. I put a piece of hardy board in the bottom and I screw the bottom and the sides together using from the sides with that diagonal screw down there like toe nailed in. That's because you're not going to want to tip this thing upside down to unscrew the sides later on. So it's spaced up on a 4x4 four four right now um, just so I can make sure the fit is good. Um, we've got four inches of insulation basically all around so I mark a four inch line on the inside and I fill that up with the material and then place it on top. So here is the beginning of the material. I did use fiberglass, that's matte fiberglass. I tore it up with my hands and made little fuzzy wispy bits and then I mix my materials. Now the mix here, um, what I've done is I've thrown in about or mixed about um, 14 parts fire clay to 14 parts perlite to one part fire cement um, and that should make you want to add just enough water so that you get this um, dry enough to handle, dry enough to make balls, but that when you kind of roll it in your hands you can stick it back together again. It should hold its shape when you toss it. Um, you should be able to catch it and uh, have it retain a ball. You should be able to drop it and it should still stay in its ball-like form. You don't want it really wet and slurry. Um, so again those uh, ratios. It's basically one to one fire clay to perlite um, and then fire cement. You know the fire cement is expensive so you can you, you want as much of that as you can basically afford but in my case like I said it was basically one bag fire clay to one of those gallon tubs of fire cement and then an, about a bag of perlite equal to the size of the fire clay mixed up fiberglass. So then I just pack that all into the mold there. Um, it goes in pretty good and when it was all done I smoothed it out um, and then let it dry for 24 hours um, and then I come back down the next day and lit a fire. Um, I did not hold back. <laughs> I really burned it hot uh, and I'm okay with it kind of cracking and, and, and stressing a little bit um, in the beginning. Now um, it's going to, the fire cement likes 
the heat to help it harden. So like I said, let it set up for 24 hours and then just come on down and fire it up. Now, so I stuck that eight inch pipe in there to help shape where the heat riser was going to go. Um, and then as soon as I got the thing hot, it kind of cracked off of there and I took it out. So that's it. I'm going to talk to you as I burn it again here in a sec, but uh, that's, that's the process. Alrighty, so we're nearing the end of this process, and uh, I just wanted to let you guys hear it and see it before we finalize this thing. I'm going to try and make this video tonight. Anyway, you can hear it ripping. I started it up literally probably two minutes ago. Let you get some audio on this thing. She is roaring. Um, if you look over here along the edge, you can see that the core has started to shrink. I burned it for a couple hours yesterday, and so it's you don't really need to worry too much about mold release or worrying if it's going to stick to the wood when you make it, because it does shrink. Now it's got cracks, and it's going to, um, and that internal uh, backer board liner is all cracking, but I expected that. It should stay stuck to it and stay there, but if it doesn't, no big deal. This stuff is going to be hard enough without it. Over here, it's starting to become dry enough that you can kind of hear that it's going to be pretty firm. I can scratch at it. Like I said, it's a liner. It's not, it's not meant to be uh, rock hard by itself, but once it's all encased in cob, this is going to be just an excellent, excellent liner. So uh, one other thing I wanted to show you while I'm drying these off, one thing that I've been doing is, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I have one of these, <laughs> what they call heat reclaimers. There's uh, steel tubes in there and a fan that blows from behind. I just took that off of my old wood stove. Um, look, look at the, uh, the smoke, or no smoke as it were. Isn't that great? Just, and like I said, it's been burning for three minutes now, or something like that. Um, anyways, I turn a fan on and it blows the hot air from inside these steel tubes, which you probably can't see in this light. There they are. Uh, blows hot air, and so I can just reclaim a little bit of the heat that I'm making while I'm drying this out, and I just blow that into the shop here. Um, yeah, not very focused. Anyways, so I'm going to try and burn it again for a few more hours and eventually this thing will dry out. Um, I think it would be better just to pour it in place, dry it out uh, in its final location, but in this case I'm building it for a buddy and I'm going to take it over there and we'll pick it up and carry it inside. It probably weighs, I've, when it's all dry it's going to weigh less than 200 pounds, so uh, a couple guys can pick this thing up and move it around. Take the box off um, and slide it off the bottom piece of wood uh, right into place and it's ready to go. So this riser is not permanent. We're going to do riser construction in the next video, part two. Okay, thanks for watching.